we're gonna make another little security camera. And I'm gonna use the security cameras that I made so far to make some content, which I can use to hit on companies that make security cameras and then convince them to pay me to make some more content so they can use it on the website, on their social media and whatever else they need. Now we're just gonna make the little camera today, but I'm gonna do the rest on a live stream inside the Digitally Enhanced program. So you can sign up for that with the link in the description. There's also a full blender course and my ebook included and a community where you can talk to other guys, including myself. So if you're trying to become a professional 3D artist, then go check that out. But for now, let's get to work. Now we got a picture right here that I got from Google by just typing in security camera. I saved that to my computer, then I replaced the outliner over here with the image editor window. I opened up the image right here. Now I can look at it as I'm working. Now we're gonna start with a ball, but I'm not going to use the UV sphere because the UV sphere has smaller faces up here than it does down here. And that's gonna make it a lot more difficult to use a Boolean modifier. So instead we're gonna do shift A, give me a cube, and we're gonna do control four to add four levels of subdivision surface. We're gonna apply that. Then we're also going to add a cast model modifier, we're going to set the factor to one and we're also going to apply this. Now we got a sphere on which the face sizes are more consistent, which means we have the same size of faces up here as down here. So now with shift A, we're going to add a circle and let's try using a circle with something like 16 vertices for now. We're going to flip that sideways and scale it down to something like this. And then we're going to bring it out to the surface and we're going to select both objects and go to edit mode so we can see the density of the geometry. And the goal here is to have approximately the same vertex density on the circle as on the surface below. So in this case, we're going to need at least twice as many vertices on the circle. So we're just going to do W subdivide W loop tool circle. And now as you can see, if we look at this from front view, it kind of looks like every vertex on the circle has a matching vertex on the surface behind. It's not exact, but it's almost there. And this is the most important part. Now we don't want to have an end gone here, we're going to go up here to face grid fill, then adjust the offset until the geometry is aligned with the world. Now select this edge loop right here and tear that with V but right click, then shift S cursor to world origin or the middle of this sphere right here, you're going to set the pivot point to 3d cursor, select this part right here. Now go to side view and you're going to rotate this by 45 degrees. So it's up here. And then you're going to select this vertex loop and go to side view again, then press Alt E spin in the spin menu down here, you're going to set the angle to 45 or in this case minus 45 because we're going backwards, we're going to reduce the number of steps as well. So we have square faces here as well. And now this is pretty much the shape that we're trying to cut into the surface below. I'm also going to rotate this by 22.5 degrees around the x axis, that's half of 45 degrees. And that's going to make it so that the equator of this sphere right here is perpendicular to the middle of this surface here. And in that case, the geometry north of the equator is going to be symmetrical to the geometry on the south of the equator. That's just going to make it a little bit easier to work here. Now this has to be a separate object. And we're going to extrude this alt s to push it inwards like this, select this sphere and go ahead and add a Boolean modifier and target this surface right here, apply this delete this object or just move it out of the way in case we have to use it later, you can delete this surface down here at the bottom. Now we're going to undo a couple of steps because the equator of this sphere is supposed to be parallel with one of the world axes. And that's going to allow us to create this little cut, which is in the middle of the sphere. So we can't have this rotation that we were talking about earlier here. Instead, we're going to do something more like this. So now we can go ahead and add a Boolean modifier and target this again, apply delete this subject right here, then we're going to do a little bit of Boolean cleanup. And I don't want to talk about that today, because I talk about that shit in pretty much every single video I make. And once we clean this shit up, I'm going to delete this surface on the inside, give me a loop cut right here and select this face in face select mode with Alt S, we're going to deflate that a little bit. So we create a bevel here. And now we're going to take this as loop right here in the middle and with control B, we're going to bevel that only slightly. Now give me alt E extrude faces along normals and just push this inwards a little bit with X, you can delete the faces at the bottom In face select mode, you're going to select this face loop here. And that's because if you do this in vertex select mode, the geometry on the outside is going to require you to select a whole bunch of shit separately. But we're just going to select these face loops, then go over here to select select loops, select the boundary loop that's going to leave only the outline of the selected area selected. Now we're going to create a small bevel here just to contain the shading and we're going to use a shape value of one and two segments. This way, when we go to object shade smooth, the entire surface is going to become smooth, but this edge is going to be sharp, but there's still going to be a tiny bevel here once we add a material and it's not going to be completely sharp. We're going to do the same shit with these edge loops over here. So control B and just create a small bevel like this. Now you can also add a subdivision surface modifier if you want to make this look cuter. And that's pretty much the dome of this camera ready to go. Now we got the outside of this dome ready to go. Now we're going to make the inside part where you got the little camera eyeball thing. So we're going to need one more sphere. But this time we 
are going to use a UV sphere. Let's set number of segments to 64 and number of rings to 32 so we get some more geometry. And the reason we are using a UV sphere is because everything comes into a singularity over here at the top, which means we can easily use this geometry here to create a circle without having to use a Boolean modifier or any of that crazy shit like we would have to do on the cube. So let's first scale this down a little bit so it fits into this sphere. Then let's rotate this by 90 degrees just so we have this eyeball here so we can see how big it's supposed to be. And as you can see, it goes outside of these borders over here a little bit. So we're going to select this vertex. Can we control plus a couple of times? And it's supposed to be right about this size. We're going to make the whole thing just a little bit smaller so it fits inside this shell like this. Now select a surface like this and extrude that. I want a loop cut over here. Then if you zoom in on the reference, you can see we have one, two, three, four little steps. So give me three loop cuts and then each of these face loops is going to be a step. And to create these little steps, we're first going to add a loop cut here and push it all the way in. Then do the same thing three more times on these edge loops. Now select these face loops, go over here to individual origins and scale this to zero on the Y axis. Now you got steps. We can get rid of all this nonsense on the inside of the steps. Add another loop cut over here and it looks like this part is supposed to be shinier than the outside of these steps. Then we're going to take the inner edge loop, extrude that inwards like this, then extrude all this right click and scale it down here towards the middle up to approximately this size. This is going to be the size of the lens here. Fill this with F, now extrude with E, now inset with I. Now extrude this inwards and scale it down a little bit, then extrude it outwards again, then inset it with I, then extrude it inwards again, then inset it with I again, then extrude it inwards a little bit further. Now we're at the glass part. So now we're going to make a little step here and this is where the glass is going to sit. And then we're going to extrude this further and scale it down to around this size. And this is where you're supposed to have a little bit of a hole. So we're going to extrude it inwards like this, inset this again with I. Nobody in the world knows what this part looks like. So just to make it cool, let's add a couple more loop cuts, control B to bevel them, extrude that with E like this. Give me another loop cut over here and with Alt S I'll push that backwards a little bit then give me control B to make this part round. Except this time I don't want a shape value of one, I want 0.5. And we're gonna do the same thing over here on the outside. So we just have to push this inwards a little bit, then bevel with control B, remove doubles. We're gonna get rid of this edge loop near the top here with X dissolve edges. And now we're gonna bevel all the sharp edges once again for shading purposes. Now, wait a minute, before we bevel anything, we need a little bit more geometry so we can create these little details over here. So select a sharp edge like this, then shift G select similar face angles. That's gonna select all the sharp edges. Now, when you add a subdivision surface modifier, you can go over here with N and go to the item menu, set the mean crease value to one, and all the edges which are supposed to be sharp are gonna remain sharp. So now you can apply the subdivision surface modifier. Now you got more geometry without fucking up the shape of the object. So now if we go down here to somewhere in the middle, we can just take a little surface like this, inset with I, go to the loop tools circle and turn this into a little circle, scale it down to around this size. And that's gonna be this little hole right here. I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm guessing it's a microphone of some sort. It doesn't matter what the fuck it is. We're gonna extrude this part inwards, create a small bevel over over here again with two segments and a shape value of one. We're gonna uncheck loop slide just because that looks a little bit better. You can also take this and slide it inwards a little bit just to make the geometry a bit nicer. And we're gonna do something similar up here, except here we don't have a circle. We kind of have like a pill shape. So first we're gonna take a four by four surface like this and inset that with I loop tool circle. You're gonna scale that down to around this size. Now select another four by four surface down here and do the same thing again. Make sure that these circles are the same size. Try to be as exact as you can. Then delete the lower half of this surface and the upper half of this surface. X delete faces, not vertices, not edges. And I just gotta connect these two circles. So let's just fill this part with F. We need three loop cuts over here. Do the same thing over here on the other side. Now select this and select this and in edge select mode, W bridge edge loops. Same thing over here on the other side. Then select this and go to face, grid fill. We're gonna set the span to four and just adjust the offset a little bit until it fits properly. Now ours is a little bit too long, but whatever. We're gonna inset this a little bit with I. Then take this tiny edge loop over here and extrude that backwards, delete the faces at the bottom. So Select this surface, go up here to select, select loop, select boundary loop, then select this edge loop, control B to bevel this. Now we're gonna select an edge loop, which is crease, and then press shift G, select similar crease. That's gonna select all the edges which we creased previously, so all the edges which are sharp, which we wanna bevel now for smooth shading. Control B, give me another bevel on all these edges. Now go object, shade smooth, and now we got a beautiful eyeball for this camera. Now the top part of the camera is ready, now we just gotta make the little base where it stands on. So shift A, give me another UV sphere, and this time we want 32 segments and 16 rings again, delete the lower half of this UV sphere like this. 
you can delete the other quarter as well like this now with k give me a knife tool place that right here press c to cut through and cut to around here somewhere then hit enter delete this entire surface in the corner over here with x delete faces select these vertices and slide them up a little just to make this part of it more round now place the 3d cursor right here set the pivot point to 3d cursor shift the right click scale this to minus one of the x axis control and to correct the normals remove vertices by distance control one or control two for a little bit of subdivision surface that's going to give us this little curve on this skirt right here take this edge loop extrude right click press alt s to move this inwards like this now extrude this right click then lower it down on the z-axis scale to zero on the z-axis make sure this is a circle with the loop tool circle the reason it might not be a perfect circle is because we messed with the shape over here at the bottom of the uv sphere so now when we extrude this it's not going to be projected into a perfect circle scale this down a little bit like this it doesn't have to be exact now you can fill this with f control b to bevel this also select these two edge loops over here control b to bevel them but well, we're going to extrude this part inwards a little bit more just so we got this little gap here i think it's going to be a nice detail lower this down and place it just below the camera here it looks like the base has a hole cut out at the top and then this little ball thing is placed on top of that so we have to cut the base and not the camera itself so let's apply the subdivision surface modifier select a vertex over here at the top then control plus to expand the selection you don't want to make the hole bigger than the ball so just delete faces like this and now we're going to select this edge loop with double g we're going to slide it down just a little bit more and now we can extrude this inwards and the only reason we're extruding it is so we can take this and make a bevel here and that way when we go object shade smooth this part is going to look nice now the model's ready let's make some materials let's talk about this a little bit the only texture we're going to have to make externally is going to be a little logo for the company down here everything else is just going to be very basic materials so let's first take care of the simple materials and i'm going to show you how you can make decals like this so switch over to the shader editor let's start with a black material for the inside here so new let's name this black plastic this just has to be black you can increase the roughness just a little bit but we don't have to increase it much i think the steps are supposed to have the same material as the outside surface over here but then i mentioned to you earlier that this little part over here has to be a little bit shinier as you can see on the middle of the picture over here so we're just going to select some of the face loops like this add a new material with this plus button and assign it to this part click new right here this is also going to be black but this part is going to be a lot more shiny so we're going to reduce the roughness in fact i'm going to go hard and i'm going to make this metallic i'm going to make the base color white i just want to make this look like chrome because i think that looks a lot prettier now the inner surface over here has to be a lot shinier so we're going to select this surface with l give me a new material here and we can call this glossy plastic assign that right there make it black reduce the roughness down to almost zero but not quite zero because nothing's completely shiny in real life something like this will do pretty well now select this little shape over here assign and add a new material you're going to name this green light in the principal node you're going to open up emission set the color to green and set the strength to something like two i got the bloom effect active in the render properties over here so if i set the strength to something like 25 i'm going to see a little bit of glow that looks pretty good in eevee I want to assign the same shiny plastic material to the inside of the eye over here. And now we still have to make a glass cover here. So let's place a 3D cursor right here with shift S cursor to select it. Then with shift A, we're going to add a UV sphere. We're going to delete just a little bit more than half of the UV sphere. Scale this down on the Z axis to make it more flat. Now extrude right click Alt S to give it a little bit of thickness. Slide this part inwards to make it flat. Control B to bevel these two edge loops. Now I want to add another subdivision surface modifier here just to make sure that this is going to reflect properly when I add a glass material to it. Object shade smooth and I'm going to add a new material. Get rid of the principled node. Shift A add a glass shader. Plug that into surface right here and we're going to have to go to cycles to do this properly. And as you can see now this thing is transparent because you can see the camera through it. So we're going to select a vertex loop over here on the bottom. Shift S cursor to select it. Object set origin origin to 3D cursor. Now if you place a 3D cursor back on this circle over here you can just snap this down there. Rotate by 90 degrees to put it in place and scale it down a little bit. And now you got a camera camera lens ready now let's go ahead and make the text that i was telling you about earlier here's how you add decals and text and logos and whatever you got to add to your textures you're going to go to google you're going to type in canva click on the first link you're probably going to have to make an account then go to create a design i'm going to go with custom size my dimensions are going to be 1024 by 1024 now since this texture is white we're just going to leave the background as it is give me a new text box add text box right here from the text section our company name is going to be inri because christ is king we're going to make this a little bit bigger and set the font size to 
to whatever you want. You can try to make it look fancy. You don't have to make it look fancy. It's up to you. If you're doing this for a client, they're probably going to be able to send you a picture of their exact logo. So you don't have to do this shit yourself. I'm going to go with this one right here. You can change the text color if you want to. I'm going to set it to dark gray. Now just go to file, click on download right here, then click on download again. I don't know why you got to do it twice, but that's the way it is. Now you downloaded this picture. So now it's in your downloads folder. We're going to select this part of the camera where we're supposed to put the little text, add a new material there, then shift a give me an image texture node where you're going to open up this image, which we just downloaded, plug that into base color, but you don't want this text displaying over the entire object. So here's what we're going to do. You're only going to select a small surface where you want to have the text, make sure that it's placed exactly in the middle. In this case, then you're going to press U unwrap in your UV editor, you're going to adjust the UV mat to display this text over here correctly. If you have a curved surface, and you want to straighten this out, go to edge select mode and with alt right click and shift alt right click, you're going to select all the horizontal edge loops, then go to individual origins here and scale to zero on the y axis Then press control I scale to zero on the x axis. And now this is straight. I know there's probably an add on that does this, but I don't know how to find it. So if somebody knows, let me know in the comments. Now in your 3d viewport, just press control I to select everything else and select all that in the UV editor here and just move it off the text. So you don't have the text anywhere else. Now you got a little logo on your camera too. Now, like I said, I'm going to use this camera right here to make a couple of scenes that I'm going to send to companies that make security cameras. And I'm specifically going to target companies that have shitty websites so they can step up their fucking game. And hopefully once they realize that they really got to level up, otherwise their competitor is going to make a fool out of them, then they're going to be willing to pay me some money. So I'm going to document the entire process of how I'm going to do that inside the Jillian enhanced. If you want to see how I do that, or if you just want to learn a little bit more about blender in general, then check out my full blender course. The link is below, but at least like the video and subscribe to the fucking channel. Let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.